Hey guys, welcome back to my little plant world. Today I wanted to show you guys my sweet potato vines, um, how I'm growing them, how I'm propagating them, and why. First of all, they are just beautiful. As you can see, I have so many different varieties here. Um, these are small plants that you could take cuttings like every week, they grow so fast. And they almost rival coleus in their colors. Um, obviously they don't have a lot of the combination colors that coleus have, but <clears throat> look at the leaf shapes on, sh shapes on some of these, they're amazing. Really interesting. So I don't grow these in soil at all. Um, I hate soil. <laughs> you guys know that, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> what I do is I grow them in lava. Lava rock, my favorite. Now, um, something interesting that I've, uh, I've come across in my experimentation with growing things in passive hydro, semi-hydro, whatever you want to call it, I call it lava, growing in plants in lava rock, um, is that whenever I would have a opening on the bottom and sitting the cup or the vessel, whatever you want to call it, in a reservoir for very um, aggressively growing um, plants like coleus and like these, which are the sweet potato vines, they grow roots out of that opening and into the reservoir, which normally isn't a bad thing if you're growing like Kratky method or something else where you want the root, roots to always be submerged in water. But in this setup that I have, those roots quickly clog up the opening that goes into the reservoir and that causes problems. And I've had to either cut back roots or repot into a larger vessel, whatever the case may be, it just causes problems and it causes problems frequently. So what I started doing is growing these plants in the lava rock without any drainage holes, without a separate reservoir. Um, I don't even put holes in the cups that I'm using. Some people like to put holes so that you can flush out very easily. Um, but what I've been doing is very different from what I used to do because of that root problem. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, if, if you have vigorous root growth, that's a good sign. I mean, the plants are thriving and they're seeking out more food and moisture. But for these guys in particular, uh, sweet potatoes and coleus that I you know, typically experiment with, it was causing a problem. So what I have been doing is only leaving about an inch maximum of nutrient solution water at the bottom. I wait for that to get used up completely. I don't want the whole container to dry out and then the plant to wilt, but I wanna make sure that all of that nutrient has been used up and is gone. Then I will replenish um, with another inch of the nutrient solution. Maybe once a month, depending on how vigorous the plant is growing, once a month I will then flush. And by flush I mean fill it up with water and then tip it all the way over and dump, cover the top with my hand. And that seems to work for this particular setup that I've been using. Um, I've tried LECA. LECA works pretty good. The only problem is it doesn't wick up as high as the lava rock. The lava rock keeps the very top damp while LECA has, you know, the uh, wicked area and then the very top is usually dry. So I prefer my lava. And as you can see, these plants, these are pretty new. These cuttings rooted and they're pretty new. So they're doing extremely well. Uh, another reason why I'm growing these plants to begin with is not just because they're beautiful and I like to take cuttings off of them, but also they're very nutritious. The leaves of sweet potato vines are very nutritious. And you can see that if you do a Google search on the internet. Um, don't take my word for it, just do your research, but they are very, very good for you. So I like to do that too. So anytime I'm trimming my plants, I'm making a little salad for myself. Um, anyway, next up for the sweet potato uh, vines is that I don't propagate them in water, even though they propagate very easily in water. I prefer to propagate them in lava. That's right, lava, what a surprise. Take a cutting like I have here, put it into the lava, as long as one, at least one node is in the lava rock. And you can see we've got roots growing in the top there already. This is not quite a week old, this cutting, but in addition to that, you can see there are also roots down here. So the roots have already grown through a portion of the lava and they're going down toward the bottom where that one inch, which is now like really just a centimeter of water is 
uh, residing. Now, this doesn't have any nutrients in it yet. I have not fed this one because it was just a cutting, but now that we have this many roots, I can start a weak hydroponic solution for grow or vigor, uh, not bloom. I don't want these guys to bloom, at least not right now. And, um, and it works really well. And this will be its home, its permanent home, unless and until I have to repot because it is extremely root bound or it starts to so, uh, show signs of decline for some reason, maybe because it doesn't have enough room. But um, another thing about this leaving one inch is that the roots grow into that one inch. Usually when I plant, you could see the roots on, are kind of in the middle of this cup and there's a, a layer of the lava rock at the bottom. And I sit the roots on top of that layer and then cover and the roots start to grow into that nutrient solution. So what happens is these roots become the air roots and they start growing more air roots to absorb some oxygen for the plant. And the roots that grow into the nutrient solution become the water roots. Now what had happened, and the reason why I figured this out or you know, through my experimentation is because I had a beautiful coleus that was in this setup in particular, and I lost it after many, many months of it being doing really, really well. And I'm like, what did I do wrong? Because the rest of the plants that I have in this setup did fine. And I realized with that particular plant, whenever I would fill it up, I would fill it almost all the way up to the top. And what would happen is those roots that became air roots got drowned. Um, every time I would fill it up, they would be submerged and they weren't accustomed to being submerged. So those roots would die off while the roots at the very bottom, the, were, the ones were, that were uh, now water roots would survive but it ends up suffocating the plant. It did not survive and I was very sad, but I learned my lesson. So now I let it dry out and when I do fill it up, I don't fill it past where the bulk of those air roots are. So I only fill about an inch. So I'd say about maybe once a week, depending on how big the plant is. The bigger the plant, obviously the, the quicker it absorbs the moisture and drinks the moisture. So it's usually been once a week for the smaller plants, maybe twice a week that I'm watering for the larger plants, um, especially coleus. Although I did set uh, a lot of these coleus up with wick watering, um, even though they're in lava rock, and it seems to be working really well, and I'll show you that in another video. But yeah, so that's my method, my particular method that doesn't seem to be very common, but that's what's working for me here in uh, in my grow space. So. Wanted to share that with you. If you have any questions or comments, or if you want to talk plants, obviously leave some comments and I will reply, I always do. And I appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We always talk about plants and all kinds of fun stuff in my experimentation. And um, share with your friends, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.